Okay, okay, yes, I know, I know. The video is supposed to start right here, but first I want to say two things. First, 1,000 subscribers. Holy moly, never thought I'd get this far. I mean, y'all were actual chads, because I never thought this would ever happen. So, I really want to thank all of you, and I especially want to thank the original 58 who were there before my channel grew. Two, I want to give a shout out to two people. One who was pivotal to this project even happening, and to another who is someone I think you should watch. First, the one who is responsible for this video even existing is a guy named Minus. Without him, I would have never even had a clue that half of this stuff existed. He provided me with a lot of information that I never would have found. So that is an insanely huge GigaChad move. The second person I want to talk about is a smaller channel named IS2, which I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. His videos are a lot more in-depth than mine, and provides a lot of really good information in his videos. So I'd recommend you go check him out. So, with all this out of the way, now let's actually get into the video. So, the first SCP we have on our list is a vehicle called the Gajim Yud. This vehicle was designed in 1958 by two Israeli tank officers, and the whole idea was to take the Sherman and reduce its hull height by 30 centimeters. Why? Well, lower profile equals harder to shoot. One problem, though, I imagine crew comfort was thrown clear out the window. Apparently, this vehicle never saw production, and the whereabouts of the prototype are not really known, but it's more than likely it was just scrapped or converted into something else. The next vehicle we have on our list is a vehicle called the L-33 Roam, which I would like to assign the nickname Lunchbox of Doom. This is yet another case of Israel modifying the Sherman tank. Now, unlike the Yud, this vehicle actually did see production and service. It saw service from 1969 to 1971, and then they were brought back out of storage into service in 1973. It carries a 155mm M68 howitzer with a maximum range of 13 miles and has a maximum fire rate of 6 rounds per minute. The number of conversions is not really fully agreed upon, but it's believed to be somewhere between 150 to 200, along with a handful of, um, <clears throat> interesting prototypes. The most notable of these was a prototype fitted with an Egyptian 152mm ML-20 howitzer, which was most likely constructed following the Six-Day War as a demonstration vehicle, as it's constructed from welded steel but lacks many features of the production model, such as the large crew door on the side. No information seems to exist on this prototype, and the only surviving original photograph is actually owned by Minus. Amazingly, a few of the production lunchboxes still exist, and you can still find them in various Israeli museums. The next vehicle on our list is a vehicle that really never actually received a proper name. However, Minus and his research team have given it the name the Zaklam M6, so that's what we'll be calling it here. Now yes, 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 I can hear you all screaming at your monitor saying, but table size, that's a half-track, not a tank. I know, but it's so cursed it deserves to be in this video. And I can get away with it because it features some tank components. This vehicle really is just a Frankenstein's monster. It's constructed using a 37mm M6 salvaged from an Egyptian M22 Locust, using a Humber Mark IV mantlet and a Daimler turret, believed to have been captured from the Arab Liberation Army, and also features a custom Israeli-made turret fitted with an MG-34, ironically enough. This vehicle seems to have first surfaced after the conclusion of the Israeli War of Independence, and nobody really seems to know whatever happened with this vehicle or whether it even actually saw combat, and nobody really knows what's happened to it since then, but it's more than likely either been scrapped or changed into something else. Now, at first glance, this Sherman looks pretty normal, doesn't it? There's nothing off about it. Well, what if I told you that in that turret is a field gun from 1903? Yes, you heard me correctly. That field gun was a Romanian field cannon which was sold to the Swiss in 1922, who then modernized it and then sold it to the Israelis in 1948. Well, around this same time, the Israelis ended up buying a bunch of Sherman tanks which had been left over after the war, 
many of them in various states of disrepair and deactivation, which they ended up buying from an Italian scrapyard at Forley for $2,200 apiece. Business! However, none of these vehicles were ever really repaired in time to see action in the Israeli War of Independence. This was due to the fact that the Israelis really were not able to allocate replacement cannons for them, so they ended up having to improvise once the war was over in order to get these things functional. And in order to do that, they went with a very Israeli approach, which was to take these old Swiss field guns they had bought and to fit them into the turret of these Shermans. Now, in the end, they only ever managed to convert six of these things into these what are dubbed Krupp Shermans. The last time these conversions were ever seen was in May 1951 during the Third Independence Day Parade. However, by the end of that same year, they were all transferred to the Israeli School of Armor where they were steadily reverted back to their original 105mm state. It is possible that the Sherman in the Yadil A. Shirai Museum was once a Krupp Sherman. However, there's no real hard evidence to back that claim. Oh, what we got here? Gonna lay there all day? Let's get you up and take a look at you. Yeah, yeah, you good. To no one's surprise, it's another Sherman-based vehicle, this one being the MacMat 160, which appears to be some kind of really cursed Sherman siege gun. This vehicle saw service from 1969 to 1971, and then, much like the Roam, then saw service again in 1973. The vehicle used a 160mm M66 mortar manufactured by Saltam, which was based on the M58 mortar manufactured by Vamos of Finland. This mortar had a fire rate of 5 rounds per minute and fired an 88-pound projectile up to ranges of 6 miles. Amazingly, just like the Roam, several examples still exist in several Israeli museums. Unsurprisingly, we have yet another Sherman conversion. This one is called the Mar 240. What? It's just an ordinary crabby. Oh my goodness! There's not really a whole lot to say on the Mar 240, as a lot of its statistics are pretty much in line with the weapon that it copied, which was the Soviet BM 24 rocket launcher, which was captured from Arabian examples which were nabbed during the Six Day War. This vehicle never seemingly reached production and it seems that only one was ever constructed. The only remark I really have is this seems to be some kind of really disturbing love child between the T-60 Katusha and the Sherman Calliope. The Katushiope, if you will. The final vehicle on this list is the Israeli Dirtmobile, that being the Mar 290. This vehicle was constructed in 1980 using a shot cal chassis, which was fitted with the 290mm Mar 290 unguided rocket launcher. The rockets fired from this launcher had a 750 pound warhead, which carried the equivalent payload of a 1,100 pound bomb, and could destroy tanks sitting 23 feet away from the impact zone. Thankfully for the Syrians, Egyptians, and Arabians who would have maybe had to have faced this nightmare fuel, it only ever remained in the prototype stage and never went past that. Amazingly, the prototype still exists and is currently on display in the Baby Museum in Israel. The one thing I would like to point out that's kind of terrifying is the 30 cal mount at the front of the vehicle, which is just so happenly right below the launcher tubes. One thing bullets don't like is extreme heat, so I sure hope the idea was to have that thing unloaded when they would fire the rockets, because if not, you have all of a sudden created a, um, what you would call a dangerous situation. Ugh. <sighs> okay. Okay, oh my. I've seen some cursed stuff over the years, but I think those honestly probably are gonna take the cake for a while. Man. Jeez, some of those are gonna keep me awake tonight. Again, I just wanna give a shout out to Minus for his help with the research on this thing and with providing a lot of images and information. And again, 
go check out IS2's channel. His videos have got a lot of really good information, and I would highly recommend it. Anyway, I am now going to go and wash my eyes out with soap after what I've seen. So, uh, bye, I guess? I still have no clue how to wrap up a video. No, 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 don't make me do this, don't make me do- No, no, no!